um, let's get straight into it. We've had a lot of news over the last week or so about different things, such as, well, first of all, the Rings of Power Season 2 updates, but also the big, big news, which is the latest on Warner Brothers Studio striking a deal with the Embracer Group, um, which directly concerns new films set in Middle Earth, and this is what we're going to discuss first. Uh, so we've had a few requests from our listeners while we've been on, on our hiatus, uh, They've been asking us to break down what's going on and take away any confusion. So I thought, why not go straight to the source, to the Fabrizio Romano, uh, get Mr. Fellowship of Fans on to help us out, because frankly, I'm a little bit confused myself. So We um, don't know yeah. what's going on. <laughs> so Harry, yeah, in, in general, just That's um, what I'm here for. What happened over the last Sorry. week? Let <clears> us know. So effectively, there was a deal since 19, I'd say 1999 from the late 1990s, which is, was between um, Middle Earth Enterprises and Warner Brothers. But at that time, Middle Earth Enterprises, where it gets a bit confusing, it was owned by the Solzans company. And they struck, struck, struck a deal, which was that they don't, Warner Brothers don't like own the rights, they get a lease to them. So I like how I like to explain it. It was like, it's kind of like a footballer going on loan to a different club. So they basically loaned the rights out to Warner Brothers. And that deal went on 20 years until recently, where there was a dispute between em Embracer, who now bought Middle Earth Enterprises off, off of the Solzant's company. And the dispute was whether Warner Brothers still had these rights anymore. And this went on for a bit. It got concluded recently, and this the thing that I think a lot of people are, is, is getting under the radar is that this deal between them now is a new deal. So this is a brand new deal. The one before concluded, one of us concluded, okay, we do not have the rights anymore, we'll concede that. Now, can we look towards a new deal instead? And instead, Embrace, instead of going to, you know, maybe Netflix, Disney, they decide, okay, we'll stay with one of us for this. But importantly, if you um, even read the press release, the difference between this deal and the one for the last 20 years, this is more of a partnership deal with mm -hmm. Embracer. So basically, before it was just like, okay, Warner Brothers, you do what you want, you have the rights. Now it's, okay, Warner Brothers, you have the rights, but now we own the rights. So they're kind of like both owning the rights and they're in partnership. So that is the difference between what's happened back then and what's happened back now. And importantly, with this deal, it cannot be a remake of the lord of the rings or the hobbit mm. as well and that's an important thing it's mainly primarily going to be spin-offs based off the movies or content in the books and that is Sweet. and those books being the lord of the rings and the hobbit i know you guys had a few funny memes around remakes <laughs> of the of the trilogy so yes luckily that won't be those rights finally enough stay with embracer the technically embracer can still go down a separate avenue but that's a long thing and to get into the technicalities of this deal it's a development deal of three years. So effectively, mm -hmm. they have a partnership deal for this initial three years. If Warner Brothers get a sufficient amount of, you know, in the development stage, if it's clear that they do have a plan going forward, then we report that after three years, it can, it can either be extended or Embrace can leave, but it can be extended before that period as well. Then another different source you actually confirmed on is Puck News. They actually said it has a three year one, then there's a 10 year one. Because, like, again, I know I keep comparing it to footballers, but like, it's kind of like, okay, you've got an extension in your contract after like, you know, five years, you can get, you can renew it, or you don't need to renew it. And that's basically what it effectively is. And that's how it's working right now. We do know, I know another thing about Peter Jackson is that all we know right now is that he has, he was kept up to date about the deals and. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether he's going to get involved as of yet or not. So I think that's right. about it up to this point. Do you, um, when you said that basically now it's going to be a partnership uh, as opposed to previously it was, uh, I know it wasn't owned by um, by Warner Brothers, but it was kind of like they were the ones that were in like searing the ship. Um, I'm not too sure. What you, I want to hear your opinion. What do you think it is now that you said there's kind of going to be a partnership? Sometimes you can think, oh, a partnership is going to be good. There's going to be more stability. But sometimes you could think on the creative side, sometimes like when you've got, you know, too many, too many cooks and all that kind of thing in the kitchen. I wonder what do you think is that going to cause like a bit of, is that going to cause even more delays when they have kind of creative ideas? And then there's another person saying, no, I don't like that. So I don't know. What's your opinion on that kind of a situation? Well, following Embrace's history, they are mainly a company first of all they're a video game company 
And second of all, with their rights, just like with Tomb Raider, they normally give it to the other companies to deal with, and we'll just, you know, work with you on that. So I, I, I think it is a valid question and a concern. And But I think, luckily, in this regard, there would not be really a, as much of an issue if they go... I think the only way there can be a potential issue is if whether if Warner Brothers wants to adapt something and Embracer might not prefer that, for example, something like The Last Alliance, because... Embrace are on, are on decent terms with Amazon right now, and they wouldn't, and they'd prefer that not to happen. So, but I think overall, in the past, Embrace has a history of leasing and giving rights to other companies, and mainly to them do it with them. But the reason they wanted a partnership on this is because the whole dispute happened where they said, Warner Brothers said, "No, we own these rights right now because you've leased it onto us. We have to, you have to wait until the end of the contract." then we'll give it back. But in this new partnership, one of this time embraces own the rights from the get go. So I think mainly it's less a creative thing, I think, and more factors like kind of like collateral in a way saying, okay, mm -hmm. instead of this happening again, at least you now know that we also own part of these rights as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, of course, we, we, that might change embrace might want to get more involved. But from track record, it seems like they have normally let the company the companies right. they work with go along with it and this this was like more of like making sure that this doesn't happen in going to Warner Brothers where they claim they own the rights because by signing this deal Warner Brothers admit okay we co-share them it's a non-exclusive deal which is another thing what thing so it's not exclusively to Warner Brothers it's shared between the two right it, it is a little bit confusing because we have uh we have Warner Brothers that owns New Line Cinema I believe or else they're they're working together and they're the ones that have made a deal with Embracer Group who own the company Middle Earth Enterprises. So it's actually Middle Earth Enterprises that have the rights to Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And this is I where don't think New Line own Middle Earth Enterprises. N they're no. owned by Solzant's. Right, okay. That, um, and then Solzant sold them to Embracer. Embracer own Middle Earth Enterprises. Right, it's it's it is very confusing with all the different studios. Involved. I've seen charts and, online of like graphs yeah. of uh, I think the some breakdown. Of them, and some I of think them are just so confusing. Yeah, to break it down, I think just simply put it like this: Embracer, they own Middle Earth Enterprises. Tolkien yeah. Estate, they're independent. Amazon, they work with the Tolkien Estate to get the TV series rights, and Warner Brothers worked with Embracer to get the movie rights. I think that's just simply. Right as it's put the technicality here amazon bought mgm which has some distri distribution dis distribution rights to the hobbit mm -hmm. and that's where mm. the movies and that's where the confusion gets in and maybe that's what maybe that's was right. done online that so... is the problem but there's i don't think there's any hobbit movies coming out in the future soon so that's like more of a thing mm. pushed to the side and be dealt on later so yeah Primarily, it's Amazon, Tolkien Estate, they have the TV series rights, but Embracer do have limited series rights, so they can make a standalone show under eight episodes, which is formed as a limited series, which is quite interesting. They, mm. But that's in coalition with the Tolkien Estate, so they have to work. That's why nothing's really happened with them, so right. except on that. Okay. And it's important yes. just to go back and point out what you said a moment ago as well to anybody listening that isn't sure and to anybody that thinks... Like the, the meme that we put out there the other day of, you know, Lord of the Rings has mm -hmm. no remake. Lord of the Rings needs no remake. There is not going to be a remake from this deal that we're speaking about now. Yeah, it is it's... not to remake the movies. It is to do, as you said, investigate new potential projects, uh, spin-offs from movies or content. Mm -hmm. And they, again, have similar rights to what Amazon have, which is the rights to the, the trilogy book and the Hobbit book, including the... Um, uh, what do you call it? Appendices. The appendices. The appendices. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, exactly. Yes. Which uh, again, yeah, just... there's loads of stuff in there that they could use, and there's loads of little mm -hmm. stories from the appendices that could be really, really awesome little, uh, t I don't know, TV series or movies or whatever. So that's really exciting. It's interesting as well because it seems like Amazon kind of has the same rights. They have the rights to the Lord of the Rings, and w which includes the. It's good though. It keeps Amazon on their to... toes, you know. It does keep mm -hmm. them on their toes, and it is probably good to not monopolize all of Lord of the Rings or Middle Earth content so that there's two competing studios. So it does have to keep them on their toes. And I just want to piggyback on that last point that you just mentioned there, Johnny, um, how there won't be any remakes. And we have a quote from the Warner Brothers chairperson, Michael DeLuca. Uh, he said, but for all the scope and detail lovingly packed into the two trilogies, the vast, complex and dazzling universe streamed up by J.R.R. Tolkien remains largely unexplored on film. 
The opportunity to invite fans deeper into the cinematic world of Middle Earth is an honor, and we are excited to partner with the Middle Earth Enterprises and Embracer on this adventure. So that's interesting. That kind of goes to show that they're already thinking outside the box and thinking of new movies, new yeah. stories to tell, uh, all contained mm -hmm. within Middle Earth. And for our listeners as well, you might have picked up on what Harry mentioned. Uh, Harry mentioned earlier that Peter Jackson, Fran Walsh, and Philip Boyens, the Holy Trinity from the the trilogies, <laughs> the Holy Trinity from the trilogy. the Holy Trilogy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Holy Trilogy. Yeah, they're all coming well they're all on board kind of they're kept in the loop um i know peter jackson came out and he said something about how he he knows everything that's going on so we don't know if he's going to be a director producer maybe an actor again <laughs> back in some of the movies but um it's, <laughs> it's good to, to know that that he's attached but I, I just wanted to ask you as well harry um i heard on your own live stream you mentioned uh, somebody mentioned i don't know it was ken uh, somebody mentioned that, that the fact that there's going to be the music from Howard Shore is going to be back allowed into these movies under these rights, I believe. So, which is a great sign because we were kind of talking about it leading up to the Rings of Power. And yeah, there were some similar motifs, but they couldn't ever use exact, you know, this is the Rohan theme. This is the Gondor theme. So, the um, ring. Or the, or the ring, yeah. But I did want to ask... Does that seem, or does that mean that these movies are going to be set in Peter Jackson's canon and in the style that he's created Middle Earth with uh, over the six movies? So, first of all, um, that's actually a good question. And um, Warner Brothers, they own the design, characters, and rights to everything that they've solely produced. So, and that includes the score, which of course is from. Um, the legend Howard Shaw so that is all owned by them so they can and if you even read in the announcement deal it can be spin-offs based off the movies themselves so it would still be in Peter Jackson's universe Warner, Warner Brothers can I guess technicality if they want to make a brand new you know Lord if they want to if they're doing spin-offs off the books I really doubt it though like they start a whole new universe it seems like everything Embracer and um, Warner Brothers are looking through spin-offs as stuff around the lord of the rings and hobbit movies so it looks like it will be it will definitely be in the same universe and that would also mean that they can use indeed use howard shaw's music and based off that the war the hearing that's coming out soon i think has a composer called stephen gallagher who worked on the hobbit mm. but he's only composed one thing i think it was like a music sound mix or something or sound something so that is an interesting thing, but again, it shows that they are using stuff from previous, from the interconnected thing. So yeah, it is, mm -hmm. it is, would, to answer the question, uh, simply is, they can and it will be back in the Peter Jackson universe. Yeah, well, that's great, because we, we already knew awesome. about this War of the Rohirrim movie, which we yeah. heard was attached to Philip O'Boyens, and Peter, was Peter Jackson attached to that, yeah? Am I just mm, not directly? I think he the gives same art style. Philippa Boyens. Yeah, same art same style. Same art style. Philippa Boyens is she's kind yeah. of show running it. I think her, her daughter, I believe, is one of the writers. Right. Oh, it's so. it's all interwoven. It's yeah. it's but it's, it's in that same but world. The impact, using the same, same world. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we've got um, illustrators are same. John Howe. Uh, yeah. Isn't it John and, Howe and involved as well? And Alan Lee. Are they both? Hmm. Yeah. they're both involved yes. both yeah. so we already knew that there was going to be a new movie coming out in that same kind of canon same yeah. kind of world but um I, I wanted to ask you what do you think this means for movies going forward what kind of movies can we expect to see we, there's been talk of young aragorn there's been talk of angmar wars but uh what do you what do you think yeah so i think the interesting thing here is with, you know, Zaslav's record, who people don't know, he's the head of Warner Brothers, and where they might go with this. I know a few days ago, the Star Wars comic came out around, you know, what I mean, it's next Star Wars. And one thing basically meant by that is, you know, how you had Solo, a Star Wars story, like mm -hmm. movies in that regard. So I split up into two. It's either you, I think it's either you go the safe route and do like the general character spin offs, or you go down the other route and do events. Kind. I know, like you can categorize Young Aragorn like maybe it's an event, but it's basically a spin off of a character. So events, I spit up. It could be Angmar War. You can have the Kinstrife, mm. which falls under the Gondorian Civil Wars over those many years. You can have Balin's Expedition, for example. These are, I think, 
more in a way more risky but as but is i think are technically in my opinion more interesting as well but if they want to go the safe route they'd go you know let's do a golem spin-off original we've already got a game why not do it on the movie you know the yeah. aragon you know we could see him when he's in rivendell when he's joined young Unidine aragon Reigns. things yeah wasn't, young that, aragon. wasn't that was it wasn't that a, a plan originally like a few years ago to do some young aragorn S- spin-off Young Aragon has been around since about 2006, 2007. I think this is thanks to Hen telling me this. Um, apparently, even when The Hobbit was being made, it was still an idea. Maybe before that, we can do a Young Aragon movie. Then mm. that was really, this is really preliminary, got rejected. Then Amazon heard a pitch, which ultimately got rejected for a Young Aragon show. And then now, yeah, it's popped up once again. But I think, again, that would be that would fall under you know oh let's make us you know make a Aowen movie let's make a Gandalf spin-off show something like that yeah you know, I think okay. I'm more the safe not sure sorry I mean movie I think those are the more safe options then you've got the more you know because before I might well you could get a couple movies after that I think mm-hmm. maybe two and then yeah, you got more like big event and expedition ones which you've got on the other side I know people will be saying okay why can't we get you know the Kinslaying why can't we get you know Baron and Luthien even though Baron and Luthien yeah, uh, even though I think it is mentioned when Aragon recounts the poem, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. still, I don't think it's enough there. But then people no. saying we can't have first stage um, stuff yeah. because that is owned by the Tolkien estate and the Tolkien estate over recent years haven't had the best relationship with Warner Brothers. But of course, I could have improved since. But as of right now, it's basically same for the third age. And for the second age stuff, um, with signing this deal... From what we understand, Warner Brothers basically agree to the fact that they cannot compete or be in direct competition with the same plans Amazon are going with. So that basically means they cannot really adapt okay. the Rings of Power and um, well, the, well, the Forging of the Rings events and the Last Alliance as well. So a lot of that in the Second Age is is based off. But I think people saying i think regardless still they were probably going to look you know close to their movies the third age anyway so yeah that's how i, would I think split the two i think balance expedition as you mentioned a moment ago that would be a really really good one to go for i think it would be a strong uh mm-hmm. contender because again you know um it's something that's relatable to people that have seen just the movies for example we know that we've heard balance name before we see mm-hmm. his tomb in the fellowship of the ring uh we see the character from the hobbit movies as well of balan so and that's just a fantastic story as well. And of course, I think one of the things that the Rings of Power has been getting a lot of praise for is their, uh, the way they've shown the dwarves. Everybody seems to just love the dwarves in the Rings of Power show as well. So I can't imagine that the love for dwarves is going to get any lesser over the next few years. So I think that that would be a strong contender for a very, very good little uh, movie idea. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm, and I, I, that's one that I would love to see. I know a lot of people are speaking about the the, the Angmar War as well and again that would be amazing uh I, I don't know there's loads of things that i've heard i'm like i want to see that yeah. i want to see that i want to see that so uh, whatever they yeah. announce i'm just gonna yeah. be like yes i will see that <laughs> a problem mm. that people don't know about angmar wars is a more of a technicality but we have elrond in it of course of course with glorfindel as well but hugo weaving if it is going to be the peter jackson universe he's already got a record saying he doesn't want to do middle earth again he wouldn't come back and even if he did he is pushing into his 60s It'd be interesting to see how Elrond would they have to like cast a new Elrond for that. And you know, it's only been basically a couple hundred years since before Lord of the Rings. So it's like how Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we could get we could get over that. that. We could get over they that. All say that. And should just look they could just CGI him in. Look at Robert Downey Jr. Look at any Marvel movie. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Well AI Who's scale him. him. Who's that who's that um actor from Star Wars that's dead and he's still showing up in movies? You know that um, the guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure the the older the older gentleman oh, who was like the, oh, the evil man, commander. Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing. Who Peter plays Cushing. Tarkin. Oh, right. The general. Yeah, the general. Yeah. Yeah, in, on the Death uh, Star. Yeah. yeah. On the Death Star. Yeah. That guy. He definitely yeah. showed up in at least like one or two movies after he Grand died. Grand Tarkin. Yeah. He, so. he showed up in Rogue One, wasn't it? And like yeah. that was years hmm. ago. That was before people had even mastered the the technology. But um, yeah. Yeah, no, whatever they whatever they announce, I'll be all there for it. But Harry, you answered a couple of my questions there, especially to do with the Tolkien estate and stuff, because that can be confusing. And why won't they just give us what we want? But last question to do with this. Do you really think um, soon that we'll have a fully fleshed out 
Middle Earth Cinematic Universe at Comic Con each you each year. We'll have the M E C U, which uh, could be could be weird. Yeah, I think this is a question that I've I've been asked quite a lot as well, and I think I think it's as I put it down. I don't think it's a discussion, or at least a, I think it's a valid concern, but I think it's a concern that we really need to worry about at least for the next three. Well, I don't think we're getting any any movies before twenty twenty seven at the minimum, and then I don't think right after that they're going to announce five six new films. I think that could, if these films do well, I think from ten years time and beyond that, that could be like a a, a general concern and where things could move to. But as of right now and for the foreseeable future, I think Warner Brothers all they have to all that we're gonna see is maybe them get maybe a couple movies under the belt and a couple mean maybe one two maybe three at max and then see how it goes on from there i think i think people i think the imminent nature of this people think maybe okay movies are gonna come in the next few years it might still be a while so even though that is a general concern of a marvel cinematic you know a, a middle earth cinematic universe <laughs> it's something that maybe come 10 years time could we start worrying about it potentially as a fear but as of right now I think for the foreseeable future is something that we we can if we got concerns, but I think there's bigger concerns right now than that. That we can you know push to the side, but that doesn't mean it's not a valid thing. So now, when we immediately have heard, I've like that's something that a lot of people have been speaking about online for a long time, and we've seen lots of memes of people creating the posters for or oh, the next the next uh, phase one, phase two, phase three of what is like or two furious. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, you know, uh, Bard the Bowman, his own little spin off, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And obviously, it's kind of it's a funny joke online and. If I was told that's actually going to be reality, it would freak me out, and I would get a bit—I would get immediately very worried and concerned. Um, but I think the way that the MCU has gone in the last year or so has definitely kind of shone a light on that. Just if you completely flood the market, which is too much stuff all the time, it's not a good thing, and you need to kind of be more, you know, uh, quality over quantity. Mm. And I think that the MCU universe has has learned that already, and so I think that if it did go to that in a few years' time, as you said, maybe twenty twenty seven or so, I think hopefully whoever is in charge of that will have learned of any mistakes that Marvel can kind of just kind of lead the way and make the mistakes, and then whoever follows in their foot, in their footsteps could have a nice little sort of a path laid out for them to know what's good to do and what's bad to do. Also. Uh, just something that I saw online, I can't remember from, from where, somewhere on Twitter a couple of days ago. I was totally against the whole idea of the MECU, but then someone said, can you imagine in like Comic-Con in a couple of years' time, Peter Jackson walks out as the new head of the MECU, and he's like, he's like, oh, the, Kevin, he's like the Kevin Feige, and he's like, okay, so we've got this show coming up, and then we've got this series, and these are going to be all intertwined. And there was a part of me that was like, that sounds awesome. That sounds yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I but, can um, so imagine him just walking out wearing no shoes, no socks, and just like, yeah, so I'm the head of the MCEU. <laughs> <laughs>